Did you people see this? I'm literally shaking right now because I just had a man approach me in a parking lot. And it went fine. And I'm going to tell you why it went fine and how to address it because it was in a book I read and this is how you're supposed to address it, but it scared me. I'm literally, I'm literally shaking. So this guy, I am a alone with my son by myself, a woman and a male approached me in a parking lot. He's excuse me, miss. And I don't know why in the hell he was approaching me or what he was trying to do. And before he, I mean, he was probably 30 feet from me when he said, excuse me, ma'am. And I turned around and I literally yelled at him and I said, do not approach me. And he like immediately started going in the other direction. And I just kept saying it over and over and over. I said, do not approach me. Do not approach me. And he of course like got like, what the F did it? Like he started cussing and yelling, like what, what's your problem? And I, and I looked at him and he started, he actually then crossed a couple cars down from my car and he didn't come anywhere near me. He crossed a couple cars down from my car and was like, what's con continuing to cuss and say, what's your problem? And I said, you do not approach women in a parking lot. I just kept saying, do not approach me. You do not approach women in a parking lot, like yelling it. No male, no male should ever approach a woman in a parking lot ever should no male should ever approach a woman in a parking lot and if a male does approach you you need to turn around and use the strongest voice that you can possibly use with them don't be polite they need to literally screw off no male should be approaching you in a parking phenomenal no male nope not here mailbox is down the street no male so this woman just needs some genuine help basically yeah i feel like the true the true crime podcasts are basically just giving suburban white women anxiety disorders like they're self-inflicted anxiety disorders, you know what I mean? It's it's pretty it's pretty bad. It's not good. Is this suburban brain rot? It's exclusively suburban brain rot. Nobody who lives in like a community could ever act like this. This is exclusively behavior reserved for people who live in incredibly safe neighborhoods, who drive to strip malls to get all their shopping done, and like their house contains 17 guns and they have they're part of like a neighborhood watch system and they're part of the next door app so they can like gossip with their neighbors about black people who walk outside if their area of the suburb even has sidewalks which it probably doesn't and they're racist yeah yeah this is why gay bars are better than straight bars lads god is this how black people feel around police yeah yeah how do you, okay the guy who she was yelling at was 100 percent black there is no universe in which i don't think that's the case it confirms all of my prior biases so i i, I assume that is the case and i will continue to assume but yeah there's a reason why um okay have you ever noticed that when you're, like, interacting with homeless people, um, homeless people generally are pretty nice and conciliatory because they're in a very disprivileged position and they're usually, like, begging or panhandling. But have you ever, have you ever noticed how a lot of white homeless people are acting kind of, like, normal? And then a lot of black homeless people are, like, insanely polite. Like, I have been yes sir, no sir, thank you sir, God bless you sir, so many times by black homeless people. And one of the reasons for that is because they're aware of the fact that a ton of people will see them as like an innate social threat. So they're trying to disarm you with their behavior. So yeah, like this all plays together. I think she literally did a follow-up video where she was like, hey, just so you know, the person I yelled at was probably panhandling. I don't know if I saw it in the comments. What is this one? Is this the same person? You know where this is going. No, I don't. Danny Mary Mitt. Living right transparently. Nope, those are different people. There was like another video, wasn't there? I swear I saw it in the comments. Well, anyway, she was like, uh, this person was probably panhandling. I don't want to say she isn't acting hysterical, but isn't it common for women to be nervous in parking lots? Um, yeah, but even if you're nervous, that doesn't mean you get to act like that. Plus, it was like 30 feet away in broad daylight in like a public parking lot, too. It wasn't like the middle of the night or whatever. Oh, this, this is her TikTok? I never browse TikTok casually, and I find the site very threatening. Context for don't approach me vid. I think that, I think this is it. Wow, I failed to provide some very much needed context to my last video, so we are gonna get right on that. Because you guys just think I scream at guys in parking lots for fun, and that is not the case. The situation has never happened to me before, and I really hope it never happens again. So first of all, we were in a mall parking lot that was completely dead. I don't know what it is about the mall in the middle of the day, but there was nobody there. Second, this was the sketchiest looking guy I have ever seen in my entire life, and I think he was trying to ask me for money because then he proceeded to walk down the rest of the parking lot looking for people to ask. I didn't have any other form of protection. I didn't want him getting anywhere near enough to me to like knock me out and rob me. 
I'm not saying that definitely would have happened, but I didn't want to open up myself to that possibility. When I first saw this guy, I had just put my son in his car seat and I stood up to see this guy across the aisle, the other cars. I'm not sure if that's exactly 30 feet, but that's where he was. And I mean, he was walking as fast as he possibly could towards me so fast that I did not have the time to walk around to my other side of the car and get in. Finally, I definitely hadn't dropped anything. This guy wasn't trying to help me. He was coming at me from the opposite direction of how where I came out of the store. In general, I am not a super paranoid person. I don't scare easily. It's actually, my husband has actually had to tell me, you need to take a little bit more precautions because there are bad people in this world. So for me to be in a situation like this that legitimately scared me, it wasn't a good- God, the fact that she would say her husband had to say that. I don't, I don't know. There's something, there's something about that situation. I did what I needed to do to protect myself and my son. And if that was an overreaction, then so be it. I would rather overreact in the moment and absolutely nothing happened than open myself up to the possibility of something happening. And again, I really hope this never happens again. People I like this, people like this don't believe in community, which is the main pro like, this is one of the reasons why our cities fall apart and why America ha like white people, America, especially have no, um, no social bonds or ties when they live in the suburbs, especially like the the idea of everything. So we live in like the safest era of human history, just to be clear. And in that environment, like a guy is walking towards me. I need to scream at him with no. She even said, like, I think he was at, like asking for money. So like, what? Well, he was he wasn't holding a knife or anything like even she, her initial impression was that he was just going to ask for money. Could have just gone like, he hello, can I help you? Like, what? I, I, it was also sketchy. He was black. I would be amazed if he wasn't. It just, just a guy looks like Jesse Pinkman walking up to him. The amount of guys that are triggered by my last post is like unhinged, absolutely unhinged. If anything, it has just solidified in my mind how important it is to protect you and your kids and to go with your instinct when you feel like you're in an unsafe situation. Stay safe out there, ladies, because if you don't keep you in your safe, no one else is going to. The amount of guys that are triggered by my last post is like This is why gay bars unhinged. are better. Bosh, right by my house, a woman was abduct abducted in broad daylight in a parking lot. Her throat was slit. Somehow she managed to escape and survive. Oh. I don't know how cringe it feels. Don't approach women in a parking lot. This shit does happen. Sorry for repeat. No, I don't buy that, dog. People get randomly attacked everywhere. Like, in all parts of, of society outdoors. You, you can't... You can't enforce some kind of, like permanent no engagement field like like do you, do you think that's like a common thing I, I like i don't know it's it's like can you not like you don't talk to a girl in your class at school because like some girls die in the school shooting I, I i don't know like obviously it's horrible that happened to her but oh yeah and i meant to say why is why are we pretending this is exclusive to women men are more likely to be attacked and killed at random outside their men are more the victims of assault and and murder than women are certainly outside women are more often to be sexually assaulted but that's usually from people they know they get drugged or coerced or something something um but in the context of just being around outside like just randomly getting attacked or whatever it's that's not guys it turns out that if you want to hurt somebody and you have a knife or a gun it really doesn't matter that much if the person you're targeting is a man or a woman first of all while men are on average stronger than women most men are also fat blobs with no athletic abilities, so it's not like we're dealing with Usain Bolt versus, like, I don't know, some popular female sprinter. Like, ah, I'm gonna, the extra two feet per second will get them away. Like, no, if, like, if you have a knife or a gun, like, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's, you know, um, so just, yeah, I don't know. I don't like the over-infantilization of women in public spaces. Even though she was hysterical, you gotta admit that's a pretty scary situation for a woman to be in, right? No! He was just walking towards her. I, like, if a person is walking directly towards me and I don't know what they want, I'm usually, like, a little on edge. But I think that's, like, normal. Like, oh, okay, well, what, what do they want? Are they going to be weird? But I don't think that's the same as it being pretty scary. Bosh, you're being unempirical. No, it's, it's literally true. Look, which gender more likely to be victim of assault and murder? true. Statistics show that men are significantly more likely than women to be victims of violent crime. A lot of that is because of, um, like gang shit or whatever, where it's, you know, um, there's, there's like a, a, an occupational element. Um, but a lot of that is also just people attack guys too.
Yeah, men were more likely than women to be killed by strangers. Here, from uh, uh, 2009 FBI statistics, among male homicide victims in 2007, 16% were murdered by a family member or intimate partner of male homicide victims, 2% were killed by a spouse or ex-spouse, 3 were killed by a boyfriend or girlfriend, over half, 54%, were killed by others they knew, 29% were killed by strangers. Females are generally murdered by people they know. How many by strangers? Or females in 2007, female homicide victims. An estimated 10% of female murder victims were killed by a stranger. Damn. So men are three times as likely within, like within their own murder statistics to be killed by a stranger than women. You know? I mean, honestly, it's probably partially that men are socialized to be less careful, though. No, yeah, I know. It's complicated, and there's a lot that goes into it. I just don't like pretending that... I don't like pretending that this true crime bullshit white woman suburban paranoia is 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 like valid or 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 um or healthy to believe in, you know? You're not wrong, but you're being reactionary. How am I be well if I if 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 I'm being right and reaction then then if, if then in this case, if being reactionary is right, then okay, like I'm re yeah, I mean, all right. So ten percent isn't valid, that's still a ton of people. I didn't say ten percent wasn't valid. I just said I don't like pretending that, like, it's like those TikToks of the women who are like, if you see a stray napkin next to your car, don't bend down to pick it up because there's like 16 Guatemalan assassins who have been hired to kidnap and rape you and they're all waiting for you to bend over. Like, I, I don't, I, I, like, yes, we live in a dangerous world and bad things can happen, but I don't think that justifies that paranoia because the paranoia often creates the situations that lead to high levels of crime. This, like, social ostracization, this suburban paranoia, leads to tons and tons of money being dumped into police budgets. And those huge social expenditures end up prolonging and worsening uh, a, a lot of the, um, the conditions that lead to high crime rates. If we, if we relax and trust each other like that, I genuinely think that it's, it's, it's healthier. In the long run, I'm sure it's far worse than I could ever imagine, Tempest. I don't actually like Costco that much. It's too big. Do you think it's valid for women to be more on edge than men, though? Sure, I'm not, I'm not questioning whether or not it's valid. I'm not questioning validity here. I feel like half the people in chat would be, like, defending that white woman in the park, the, the Central Park lady who called the police and that black guy or whatever. I, I, like, I don't know. It's... it's Vosh, no, Vosh, that's paranoia. A woman feeling uncomfortable is just a product of how they were brought up. Women are more cautious around men because of what they have learned, not because all women listen to true crime podcasts. I'm not saying all women. I'm saying this woman. I'm saying white, upper-middle-class suburban women. Those women, okay? I grew up in LA and interacted with people from plenty of socioeconomic strata. There are no women in the ghetto who will scream at a man the nanosecond that he approaches her from 30 feet away. Like, holy sh- I can't even fathom that. I can't even imagine, like, like going to East LA and there being, like, a Hispanic mom who, who screams at someone for walking towards- like I, I, like, I can't even imagine what that environment would look like, you know? Even though crime rates are way the f higher in East LA than wherever this lady lives, I can guarantee you that. Probably, like, 20 times as high. Um, again, I'm not against being cautious or whatever, but she wasn't being cautious. She just started screaming at a guy who she admitted was probably just looking for money. Mosh, you keep reducing it. He was walking very fast right towards her in a deserted parking lot. I don't, first of all, I don't believe her. I think he was walking at a normal pace. Um, and I think the parking lot was deserted because it was a strip mall because she lives in the suburbs and suburbanites are subhuman. But, uh, I like, it was, I, I think it was a guy walking up to her. Walking very fast. Remind Chad of that soccer mom tank. Oh, God. Yeah, here's the perfect vehicle. So she can hit the button that deploys the flashbangs. Hey, mamas. Let's talk about the memorable features on the Red Zvani Vengeance. I'm body armored, and so is this vehicle. For even more protection, you have explosive underbody shielding, bulletproof glass, electrified door handles, military grade run flat tires and a ram steel bumper if anyone's following you you have blinding lights in the front and the back or a smoke screen plus my favorite pepper spray if you're picking your i swear too many people have watched shit like law and order and think these stories remotely reflect the dude there are white women who are like afraid of being trapped you know like 99 percent of sex trafficked victims are undocumented immigrants and prostitutes right the 
F crime cartels are not making their way two and a half thousand miles into America, into the heartlands, to go to a wealthy suburb to find a white woman where every cop in the tri-state area will be alerted to her disappearance to, to, to get one kidnapped sex slave, okay? They go after undocumented immigrants and children, yes. They go after defenseless people. They go after people with no social power, not people whose husbands could hire a fleet of lawyers and private investigators. Like, just, oh my God. It's not to say that this doesn't ever happen, but like, holy shit, there's 8 billion people on earth. You know, like anything could happen to anyone. We have to talk probabilities. I think the screaming is the only issue. I think it's okay to be a bit fearful of people approaching. What if she just asked them nicely to stay back? I, I think if she had turned and saw the guy walking towards her, first of all, if somebody was walking towards me in a parking lot, I would just assume that they were just trying to get to the car next to me or behind me. I don't even know how you know if a person's walking towards you. But if I could like, if if it was like one car in the middle of nowhere, like or in the parking lot, like there's no other car right there next to me. And I turn around and this person's making eye contact with me, walking directly towards me. I, I think I'd probably, I'd probably say like, can I help you? Or like, hey, can I help you? Now, if he was bolting for her, I think she would be right to say, like, you know, to yell, like, um, like, uh, you know, no, get away. But th that, like, you never approach a woman like that bullshit, that makes me think he wasn't actually being threatening. Because I don't think that chick has the balls to say something as stupid as, you never approach a woman like that if he was actually giving off any threatening energy. I think he was more like, to her, in her mind, like a puppy dog. A poor, probably black person begging for money who she, he, he, she saw someone of lower social status approach and she just talked him down like an animal. Because if he was really demonstrating some kind of threat, she wouldn't have done no, no swiping, no means no to this person. She would have booked it or sprinted into the car. If he was intending on attacking her and given that vibe, I don't think she would have stood her ground and swipe or no swiping Tim. I think she would have bolted into it. I think this... Boy, I think this woman uh, saw somebody of lower social status, watches a lot of true crime or Law and Order SVU or whatever the fuck else, and and thought like basically a like this this lower status human is is in a, in my presence and I don't like it and I don't appreciate it. I don't want to talk to them about whether or not they need money, so I'm just gonna like scream at them like a like a like a nanny or whatever. That's what I think. I have a very low opinion of this woman. Now, if you guys encounter people being actually threatening or whatever, like in the real world, you do what you need to to stay safe, okay? Please just don't do the swipe or no swiping and then get in your car and then from your car, immediately huffily record a TikTok where you talk about how you just saved your life from a person who probably would have subjected you to the indignity of being asked for money, you know? Like, just, yeah. Sorry, that was my, that was my rant. Nah, bro, you are overestimating the sense white people have in tense situations like that. I, I, I know white people don't have sense. There's footage of the incident. Wait, real? Wait, how is there footage of the incident? <laughs> no, you do not approach a woman like that in a rainstorm. You do not approach. <laughs> Never approach a woman like that in records. Oh, this RE3, yeah. Uh, <laughs> your kids up from the mall. Let them know you're there with strobe lights and your intercom. Hey, Bobby, it's your mommy. Your Thank you. If it was at night, would your opinion be changed at all? I, I think if it's at night, the perceived threat level goes up quite a bit. But I still don't think the way she responded makes sense. I still think she could. She could. Hey, like, hey, what's up? Or like, hey, can I help you? Like that, like that to me is like a very reasonable thing to do, right? Like if you're feeling paranoid about this, but hey, can I help you? Um, or, or like, like, you know, like you talk loud to indicate that you want to talk to them from a distance or something like, I don't know, something like that. I don't know. Probably not like activate. Yeah. Like someone approaches you at night, like they're just, it's a parking lot, they're walking towards you and you activate your, you, you blow into your rape whistle, then you reach into your purse and you deploy your rape flashbang. Um, and then you set the, the rape incendiary device on the ground and pull the, the cord that, that, that sprays the kerosene in all directions. And then you, you know, you, you, you deploy the thermonuclear rape device. Like, <laughs> you just give them the nod. Kids will love that it was styled by a video game designer. Vengeance is based on the Cadillac Escalade, so Mama gets heated and ventilated. Let's yes. see. Her 
aren't only Please stop arguing with me. I'm never gonna get never gonna get past this. Yes, Vosh, her reaction was bad. Stop saying women being afraid of men in parking lots is true crime. I'm not saying women being afraid of parking of men in parking lots is true crime BS. I'm saying her reaction was bad. I have never said that women don't have a reason to be afraid of men, okay? It's just we need to reasonably proportion that fear because if it goes out of control, you have a bunch of, like, insane, like, anti-social, like, delusional crime and order bullshit, you know? A display with augmented reality, a digital rearview mirror, which is necessary. Vengeance is only yours, and so is everything in this built-in safe. Parents might need to help their kiddos open the door, but it's a breeze to get in. You have heated seats, a third zone of climate control, cup holders, and two USB-Cs. Bring the kiddos along with five top tethers, two sets of lower latch anchors. It's a three-row SUV that seats up to eight people. Why are we watching the full thing? Because it's just so psychotic that every time I get, every time I start watching it, I just, it's so, so insane. WTF, is this a joke? Someone better not get kidnapped. Okay, so obviously a lot of my followers already know about this, but for the ones who don't, we're just going to go over this real quick. So what you see on her car handle right there is wire. Now, it can come in all different forms, but the reason people use wire is because it will distract you for longer. It takes you a long time to get it off, and even if you had wire cutters, it'd still take you a minute. If you ever see this on your car, do not approach your car alone. I cannot stress that enough. The best thing you can do in that situation is go back to wherever you were that was the most populated and grab somebody to escort you to your car. And best case scenario, multiple people. Well, I mean, best case scenario, it won't be on your car, but you see where I'm coming from. Regardless, just know it's not a good sign and just please stay safe. Make sure he wasn't still out here. When I came back out here, there was a water bottle on my hood. Oh my f god. I'll leave her information below so you can see the original video, but basically what happened was she was followed by a man and then when she came back to her vehicle after seeking out help, a water bottle was left on the hood of her car. This is a tactic used by traffickers and kidnappers to get you to exit your vehicle and take whatever is on top of the car off. If you have this happen and something is on the hood of your car when you come back to it, leave it there. Drive away, it'll fall off on its own. If you feel extremely threatened by the person that was bothering you, drive to a police station or to an auto body. This is, just so you, just so you all know, this is all completely fake. Some of this is genuine anxiety disorder, and some of this is people being insane, and some of this is people making shit up for clout. This is all completely fake. This came out of this came out of nowhere. All of this is just pe people on TikTok were just making shit up to each other to fuel people's anxiety disorders. This is not this is not how this works. Middle of the day, crowded parking lot, someone's just gonna run up and grab you. Yeah, okay. I mean, could it happen? Like, sure, worse things have happened, but like, seriously, a meteor could hit you. Jesus. It's the TikTok version of creepypasta. Yeah, but creepypasta is evidently fake, whereas this stuff is designed to, like, trick gullible people. Vosh changed topics. I don't give a shit about this. Okay, we're now talking about this for the next eight hours. Your fault. On my hood. And something is on the hood of your car when you come back to it, leave it there. Drive away, it'll fall off on its own. If you feel extremely threatened by the person that was bothering you, drive to a police station or to an auto body shop. They can look underneath your car and see if there are trackers there. Yes, believe it or not, GPS. Oh my f god. Why? Why? Wh Why would a trafficking organization need to tra What? It's like literally like true like SVU. Oh my god. Yeah, this is not breaking bad. Is this all? Is this is this like an ego thing? Are, are like these white suburban women just really bored and they just want to believe that they're like so attractive and desirable that these like trafficking cartels are coming into Wisconsin suburbs so they can like yeah like main character syndrome shit but yeah no it's main character syndrome shit yeah like, all this stuff is happening to me nothing happens to you you live in the suburbs yeah stuff like this does make it harder to battle sex trafficking for sure kind of hysteria yes trackers can be put on the bottom of your car and they can give off your location for a certain amount of time never go straight home Try oh my god if somebody leaves a water bottle on your the hood of your car, don't drive straight home. Drive a complicated loop around the city with 17 sharp U-turns to... Oh...
don't care how old you are. They don't care what you're wearing. They don't care about your size. If you, if a person ever makes eye contact with you in the street, run to your car and drive in circles for three hours. <laughs> yeah, th yeah. This is a psyop from Exxon Mobil, so that so that people have to refill more often. Guys, if they want you, they'll try to get you. Always be aware of your surroundings. My wife's white co-worker thought she was going to be trafficked because of something exactly like this and was so distraught she didn't work for a week. It was insane. Jesus Christ. Try to go shop with a friend. I know it's hard during COVID. Keep pepper spray or a protective device on you. Please stay safe and like and follow for more safety tips. More safety tips. Ways bothering I wish I knew what her TikTok handle was so I could see more safety tips. Here's a safety tip. Lock yourself in the basement and never leave. True. Yeah, it's, it's zoomed in so I can't. It says the TikTok in the top left. Oh, wait, it says the TikTok up here. It's just there's a white window. A chunky guy. That's the TikTok for this lady? No, it's, it's the TikTok for this guy. Wait, so does that mean her TikTok is this? LSB423 and they just mixed them up? That's a very specific and stupid thing to do if that's the case. Yeah, that's what they did. That was the move. I just want to see one or two more safety tips. That's, that's all I want. Shouldn't it say safety tip on the front? Deciding how to deal with another anxiety attack. See? I'm telling you, man. It's an anxiety thing. It's a anxiety disorder thing. TikTok's an ADHD nightmare and I hate it. Yeah, yeah, true. I don't think we're going to find what we're looking for. All right. Probably cats on that, yeah. I hate... I'm sure he wasn't still out here. When I came back out here, there was a water bottle on my hood. I'm going to leave her information below so you can see the original video. But basically what happened was she was followed by a man. And then when she came back to her vehicle after seeking out help, a water bottle was left on the hood of her car. This is a tactic used by traffickers. You come back to it, leave it, then you drive there. Yes, the amount of time. Or they don't care what you Always be aware. I know it's hard or protect on you. Please stay safe and like and follow. You didn't f react. What the f are you adding to okay we're not doing tiktok i hate tiktok really do didn't say anything she just nodded duet adds nothing well maybe it, oh yeah a duet isn't a stitch a stitch is when their video ends yours starts but a duet is just you react over their video that's right that's right that's right yeah critical support to the gop in their quest to ban tiktok yeah probably found footage of the guy walking towards <laughs> hey you there <laughs> Making the mother of all omelets, Jack! <laughs> Wait! We have to finish with this. From an actual human trafficking site. Viral stories that do more harm than good. And then it talks about how I'm right. I don't know. Oh, these are all like the conspiracy theorist things. Trafficking kids in overpriced cabinets, high-priced online items. Clinton Global Initiative. White passenger vans. Okay, hold on. We're not we're not gonna stop calling these pedo vans, are we? Reality traffickers drive all kinds of vehicles. Yeah, this was the Wayfair thing, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Zip ties and marked windows. Rumors about the use of zip ties or marking of vehicles by traffickers have been proven to be false. We examined data from the US National Human Trafficking Hotline from January 2015 to December 2021 and found there have been zero cases of zip ties being used as lures or markers that alert a potential trafficker of a vulnerable person. Yeah, because that's a f idea. One of the most pervasive myths about human trafficking is that it always or often involves kidnapping or otherwise physically forcing someone into a situation. In reality, most human traffickers use psychological means such as tricking, defrauding, manipulating, or threatening victims into providing commercial sex or exploitative labor. Traffickers also rarely target victims they don't know. Yeah, like, think about it, okay? It... What do traffickers not want to traffic? People who have lawyers for, for relatives. Like, think about it. What if what, they kidnap some woman who has, like, a cop? Like, this is the lesson from the movie series Taken. They took a girl, and it turns out her dad was a wizard or something. Yeah, that's why you don't go after random people. You don't know if their dad's a wizard. He's a Jedi? Yeah, Jedi are wizards. They are. They. I mean, they are. If you're breathing, a trafficker might put knockout gas in your air, so do not breathe. True. Yeah, every moment you're outside um, should be spent in a gas mask. That's true. Traffickers will tell you not to subscribe to the channel. That's true. Human traffickers do not want you to subscribe uh, or donate to, uh, to Vosh. 